range. Now, that means the high notes. And I bet a lot of you came straight to this chapter first. It's a thing about trumpeters. They just love to play high. No secret as to why. It sounds so good. I mean, trumpet can do anything. Let's get that out of the way right away. In case there's anyone playing other instruments watching this, trumpeters can do anything. But one of the things that a trumpet sounds best, this is my personal opinion, is when it plays high. Because when it does that, it can do something that almost no other instrument does. It has this fantastic energy to it. That's why at the top of a big band, they have a lead trumpet playing high most of the time. All right, we all know why we're here looking at the range chapter. Let's talk about it, because not only is it something that most trumpeters want to do more than anything else, it's one of the things people have the most trouble with. And there's no reason for that. Here we go again. I'm going to say it's simple. It is simple. Once you get a few basic principles in mind, yes, there's going to be some practice involved. But uh, there's no great technique here that you're going to have to master to be able to play high. Very simple physics range on the trumpet. Okay. Here's how it works. We know that we buzz our lips, don't we? Like that when we play the trumpet. Okay. We don't actually buzz our lips. I'm going to be a little semantic here. It's the air passing through our lips that buzzes them. You try actually physically buzzing your lips. You can't do it. You just hold them still and blow air past them. And then they buzz all of their own accord. You might be going, oh, okay. This is important stuff because I'm changing, if you didn't think about it this way, your concept of what's happening. You're not buzzing. You're blowing air. The lips are buzzing on their own. Already it's getting easier. Now, the air passing through them has a lot to do with what speed they buzz at. And you know it's a vibration, and a faster vibration is a higher note, and a slower vibration is a lower note. So far, so good. But think about that. If I said to you, play me a high note, play me a low note, what are you doing different? You might start talking about things you do with your lips, with your embouchure. You might start talking about whether you pull out or squeeze or do all sorts of things. But I just said a low note is a slow vibration and a high note is a fast vibration. So how are you going to make them vibrate faster or slower? Well, there's two main ways you can do that. You could tighten your lips. And you know, if you get an elastic band and you flick it, it vibrates a lot like your lips. And if you stretch it, and flick it just the same, you'll get a higher note. It'll vibrate faster because it's tighter. Some people play higher by doing that with their lips. It's very limited. One of the things is, what do you do when you get to here? <laughs> How do you go higher? The other thing is, it makes your lips thinner. Now, you might not hear this with the elastic band, but it's not just the pitch that changes when you stretch it. The quality of the sound changes because that faster vibration is narrower and you get a thinner sound, and that's what will happen in your trumpet. Plus, this is not a very good way to control which note you're playing. It's quite difficult to do. And making your lips thinner tends to make them push back against your teeth more, and this will cut down on how long you can play high for. We'll talk about that more later. But right now, I think I've sort of said, I don't play high by stretching my lips. We've got that. Squeezing them together harder can make them vibrate faster because they're firmer. But again, this has limited. I mean, what do you do once you squeeze them as hard as you can? That will run out very quickly too. It's also extremely difficult to control. So how do we do it then? That's enough of how you don't do it. We do it with the air. If the air, if I leave my lips the same and I pass faster air by them, they vibrate faster. Have a think about this. It's easier to think about than lips. Get a piece of paper and hold it out the window of a car. Hold it by the front edge and it flaps, you know, it actually makes a note, usually quite low. Now, how could you make it flap faster? You don't move your hand, because that would be like trying to move our lips. You just drive the car faster, right? As the wind goes faster and faster, it will flap faster, the note will get higher. It's the same for your lips. There's another great part of this analogy, though. What's likely to happen if you're holding a piece of paper out the window of the car by the front edge, and you drive faster? It's going to blow out of your hand unless you squeeze your fingers tighter to hold it. The same thing happens. Imagine this is my lips, and the air is passing from inside here and out. The trumpet is here. Okay, now if I blow, I'll take the trumpet away so you can see this. If I blow, my lips want to go and open, don't they? So I use the muscles in my embouchure to hold them back to where they need to be. Now if I keep that hole, I'm looking through it at you, the same size, and I put more air through it, 
What's it got to do? It's got to go faster. And the faster it goes, the faster the lips will vibrate, the higher the note. So I don't move my lips to go up and down on the trumpet. I leave them the same, I change the air. You might be going, well, gee, when I blow harder, it's to go louder. That's because when you blow harder, you don't keep your lips the same. You allow that extra air pressure to open them. And as they open, you get a bigger hole. And instead of faster air, you get more air going through. And once you get more air at the same speed, you get a louder note of the same pitch. Of course, that's how I play louder too, but I deliberately open my lips to play louder and close them to play softer. Have a think about it. Perhaps you open your lips to play lower and close them to play higher. Okay, think about it like this too. Here's a great one that I have in my mind sometimes, especially earlier on when I was trying to figure some of this stuff out. I think of it like a tap and a hose. And on the end of the hose, you've got one of those things you can twist, you know, to make the air go, the water, I'm stuck on air, to make the water go really far in a thin spray. But you know, if you open it right up, you get a really fat sort of amount of water that just kind of falls out the end. But lots of water comes out. If you want to fill up a bucket, you know, you put it on the fat one that's slow, you get the water quicker into the bucket. But if you want to reach a long way, you turn it to the thin one and it goes a long way. Lips are the same. What is the tap in this analogy? That's your diaphragm. That's the air supply. You turn on the tap. If I'm holding a hose and pointing it and I want it to go further, and remember the further it goes, it's a higher note. Right? Let's point it straight up so we can see how high the note is. How can I make it go higher? What's the best way? I could squeeze the thing a bit more on it. It'll go higher, won't it? But it'll get really thin. You know already what I'm going to say. You just go and turn the tap on. And up she goes. It's the same. Turn the tap on. Leave the nozzle the same and you get a faster vibration, you get a higher note. When you want to go lower, start turning the tap down. Now if you've got it really tight on the nozzle and you turn the tap down, what can happen is it can stop. So you do need to open as you relax with the air. All right. This might be a new concept for you. I'm just going to recap it in one simple thing now. Instead of opening and closing my mouth to play higher or lower, I open and close my mouth to play louder and softer. Instead of blowing harder to be loud or blowing less to be soft, I blow harder to go high and I blow less to go low. You just flip those two things around. And you'd be amazed at some of the things that happen. The first thing is you'll be able to play higher. But more than that, you'll have better control over the notes when you get into the upper register, which we all know can be a bit tricky sometimes. Now, there's a couple of things that can go wrong with this. And I'm going to show you what they are. You've all heard this sound. It's when you start playing a scale and you're getting higher and you suddenly get, watch this. You know that one? Go for a high note and you get this sort of squealy air sound. What's happening is you've stopped your lips from vibrating. So all you're getting is the, the fast air passing through. How do you stop them? The most common way is by pulling back with the trumpet against your lips. When you do that, it's real simple. You got It's like the paper. If it was flapping in the wind and you grab the other end of it, it'll just stop vibrating. You're pressing the mouthpiece against the thing that's vibrating. You know how to fix that? Watch this. Looks funny, doesn't it? But you just push the trumpet away a little bit and it goes. Anytime someone's having that problem, if you just move the horn forward a little, the sound comes out. Now it's a bit of a tricky way to play, playing like this and grabbing all the time with you. So it's actually considered good form just to back off with this hand. I'm being silly, but it's quite true. We just pull back and stop the sound. Why would we pull back in the first place? It's another way of supporting the lips because even if we're using what I call the right technique, and let's just say it's my way of playing and a lot of others too, to increase the air to go higher, didn't I say you have to keep your lips in the same place? Now, of course, what's the limit to your range then? Partly how hard you can blow, how much air you can put through the horn, but also can the muscles in your lips hold your lips in that same place? Because by everything I've said so far, it sounds like you hardly need an embouchure. You do, and you have to have quite a lot of muscle here to hold your lips in the same place against this increased airstream. Blow harder and harder, and your lips more and more want to go like that. So you have to hold them back. Now, they get tired. So what do you do? Hey, you've got a trumpet here. You can just press back and hold them back with it. 
Now your arm's doing the work, not your lips. Bad idea. One thing is you'll get that sound that I just made a lot of the time. But the other thing is you're mashing your lips between a metal mouthpiece and your teeth. And that cuts off the circulation to them. And that's going to affect your endurance. I'll talk more about that later too, because now we're just concerned with the range. Back off with the horn. Two things happen. One is right now, you'll get what your real range is. If you can't play above a note, and you want to be able to play above it, and you say, well, this isn't working, you just need more muscle. How do you get it? You don't get it by pulling the trumpet back. Do you know anyone, perhaps it's you, who's played the trumpet for many, many years and done a lot of practice, would like to play a little higher, just can't seem to get past a certain point? Because the muscles in your lips aren't building. If they were, you get stronger and stronger, you get higher and higher. The reason they're not building, even if you do a lot of practice, is you're building your left arm muscle by holding back with the horn when you play. Back off. You might lose a few notes of range right away. And if you've tried that, you're going, well, that doesn't work. It does. You've just put the work back onto your lips. Now, when you finish a high note session, if I can put it like that, do you have sore lips right in here? That's from pressing back. Or do you have tired lips out here? Notice I use a difference of word tired and sore. Sore is injured. Tired just means done a lot of work, need a break, will be stronger tomorrow. It's like muscles when you do weightlifting. They get really tired. That's a certain type of soreness. It's different than when someone punches you in the arm. Pulling back with the trumpet's a punch in the lips. Okay, make them work out here. When you get tired as though you've been smiling too much, you're working on the right muscles. If you get sore in here, it's not going to go anywhere. It'll just recover and then you'll be the same tomorrow and the next day and in the next 20 years. That's my experience anyway. So back off. Even if you lose some notes right now, when I say back off, I mean don't pull back with the instrument. Even if you lose a few notes off the top of your range right away, you'll notice you don't get sore here anymore, of course, because you're not pulling back. You'll get tired out here. Tired muscles are muscles that are building for the next day and your range will start to go up. Always focus on when I want to go up, increase the speed of the air. Leave my lips the same. Perhaps firm my embouchure so that they don't blow out. And that's all. And as I come down, start slowing the air down and relax with the embouchure so it doesn't close. Obviously, if I'm pulling hard against the air and I take the air away, it'll shut. Okay? So there is an embouchure movement, if you like, as you go up and down, but your lips don't move. The movement is just these muscles tightening or relaxing to hold everything in place. Because you know the difference between a good sound and a bad sound, there's not much. You don't really move your lips much when you play the trumpet at all. All that great range we can get is all to do with the speed of the air. You'll need to practice this. And as I say, expect, if you don't have the range you want now, expect to lose a bit of range when you start trying this technique. But don't be discouraged. We're not talking years here. We're talking about a month of doing this and the muscles will build. And then you'll go right past where you used to be up to what the real limit of your range is. We all do have a limit. There are guys that can play a lot higher than me and I can play a lot higher than a lot of people. Um, just like some people can run faster than others, no matter how much they train. We all have different bodies and different talents. But I guarantee you, if you're not doing it this way, you're not reaching the limit of your natural range yet. All of us should be able to play high enough that we can be one of those screaming trumpets on the top of a big band.